Hi, my name is Robert Collins, and I'm a consultant within professional services here at Esri UK. I have the privilege of talking to you today about ArcGIS dashboards and introducing you to what's new within the application. This recording will be split up as follows. I'll be discussing what ArcGIS dashboards are and why you should use them within your GIS workflows. This will be followed by a demonstration of the latest release of ArcGIS dashboards. And finally, I'll wrap up with a review of alternative dashboard style applications within the ArcGIS ecosystem. Now, there probably isn't a better place to start than what is ArcGIS dashboards. As the slides say, they are configurable applications for presenting and visualizing data. They're available within ArcGIS Online and various versions of ArcGIS Enterprise. Dashboards are interactive and allow for individuals to visualize trends, monitor real-time incidents, and tailor data for decision-making. You may be familiar with one of the high-profile ArcGIS dashboards of the past year, which was the COVID tracking dashboard from John Hopkins University. This is shown on the slide. If you're already familiar with, Ar with ArcGIS dashboards, it's worth touching on the recent updates seen within the application. In fact, a new version of ArcGIS dashboards was released in April this year. This new update has brought a number of impressive changes. In my opinion, data expressions are the standout addition to this release of ArcGIS dashboards. Data expressions are arcade expressions written to return a feature set. This means we can leverage Arcade's ability to perform mathematical calculations, manipulate text, and evaluate logical statements, and so on. This offers a whole new set of capabilities for configuring informative and robust data visualizations. One example may be that our data requires restructuring. Our survey may have, been collected, may have collected the road condition at certain points, but instead of displaying this data, we want to break it down into the individual hazards. We can use a data expression to split this information into a separate row. Or, alternatively, we may wish to group records collected within the same county so that we can track overview statistics for an area. One of the other updates is selection-based display. And these new options allow authors to tailor the display of infographics to only show data which has been selected within the dashboard. Think of it like this. If you have no conditions, your dashboard and all of its data visualizations display at runtime for users to see all of the information at once. With selection-based display, you can choose to display a selection of your data only when one or more conditions are met. One example may be requiring users to select a site before seeing detailed information stored within that specific layer. This maintains focus within the dashboard and shows only the most relevant data. Dashboards configured with these options will not only be easier to read, but faster to load. Thirdly, ArcGIS dashboards can now take advantage of the new map viewer, which uses the most recent version of the JavaScript API. There'll be another box set video on the ins and outs of the new map viewer, but features include dot density style smart mapping, improved clustering, layer blending, and group layers. Finally, another notable change has been to the ways in which dashboards are designed and built. This allows a dashboard author to specify how elements respond to user interaction. We may wish to prevent a user from expanding certain cards into full screen, whereas it would be useful to be able to expand complex charts. However, my favorite under the radar layout design improvement is the inclusion of percentage sliders to use while building your dashboard. These allow for you to confirm the spacing between different elements to ensure for efficient use of that precious screen real estate. So it's about time we move away from screenshots and dive into a demonstration of ArcGIS dashboards and the new functionality available. On the screen, you're seeing a uh, ArcGIS dashboard, which I've created earlier. I've opened this in the editor mode, and you can tell this based on the header at the top, which allows me to add new features to this dashboard. But firstly, let's describe what's going on. So here we're looking at UK earthquakes, uh, two layers, modern earthquakes and historical earthquakes from the British Geological Survey that are shared with, within the Esri Living Atlas. At the top, we have two indicator cards, which are showing counts of the total number of earthquakes. Then we've got a set of charts, the first of which is a time series showing the number of earthquakes over time for modern and then historical. We've also got a chart showing a comparison between the average depth and the magnitude of the earthquakes, again, for modern and historical earthquakes. On the right hand side, we have a map. This is showing both of those two layers, um, but you might not need a map. Uh, you could always look at individual layers and not present them. Um, their location on a map, you might want to have another chart in place of this. And I'll show you how that might work in the future. At the top, we have a date and a, a choice of numbers uh, filter. So if we use this uh, date filter, we could maybe uh, show the 
how the data has changed in the last, how, how much data there is in the last five years uh, for the modern earthquakes. Um, and we can see how the dashboard is interactive and responds to that change. So I'm just going to clear this change out and replace the date. Great. So let's think about some of those new changes to ArcGIS dashboards and how we might want to apply those within the dashboard itself. At the bottom, we have this average depth and local magnitude comparison, and we have it for modern and historical earthquakes. But currently, users need to flick between the two to compare. So let's think about how we could use a data expression um, to combine these into one chart. I'm going to duplicate this chart, and I'm going to place it underneath this. Make sure I'm configuring the right one, and then go to configure. So as you can see, this chart is currently looking at the UK modern earthquakes layer. If I go change, I can then see which layers I can point the, point the chart towards. Naturally, we have the layers that are included within the map, which includes that UK modern earthquakes layer. We could choose another layer within ArcGIS Online, perhaps one on the Living Atlas, um, or we can use a data expression. You'll see two that I've, I've got already created here, the first of which is comparison. Um, so let's dive into to editing this uh, expression. This is the one we're going to apply for this chart. Firstly, I'm going to bring in the two, we're going to create two variables out of the feature, out of the two layers that we've got, modern and historical earthquakes. I'm going to grab the item with feature set by portal item, name the portal, find the item, and then choose which uh, fields to bring in from that layer. I'm going to do the same for the historic earthquakes. The next thing to do is to create a dictionary, which is where we're going to store this combined data. We're going to need to state the earthquake type, whether it's a modern or historic earthquake. We want the local magnitude, which is the Richter scale. And then we want the depth. Finally, we're going to need to, we're going to, need to populate that data with the two layers. So we're going to loop through the modern earthquakes layer first. And in particular, note that I've chosen to round the Richter scale information from that layer. And I've chosen to do this to two decimal places because the modern earthquakes were actually calculated to a far greater scale, um, many magnitudes <laughs> greater than the um, historical earthquakes. That's why I've chosen to round that data set. And then we've, we're going to loop through the historic earthquakes layer and bring that in. And finally, we should return that as a feature set so that we can visualize it in the chart. If I run a test here, you'll see how the data looks in sort of table form. So we can see that we've brought across the earthquake type, the local magnitude, and the depth, um, which is perfect, just what we need. Now an issue is done. And then really, as when creating a, a normal chart within dashboards, I can put together my, um, my chart. I can show the category being local magnitude along the bottom. I can split this now by earthquake type. And we're going to want the sum uh, not the sum, we're going to want the average of the depth. And then finally, just to make sure the dashboard looks uh, as we expect, I'm going to sort by the Richter scale so that it's it's going up from the bottom. We just need to tidy up the chart now. So I'm going to add average depth along uh, the value axis. Um, and then choose the correct color scheme because the default doesn't quite match the, the charts that we've been creating previously. I'm also going to add a opacity to the, the fill of the, this chart, um, mostly because I, I think it adds a little something to this uh, this specific diagram. Now that I click done, we can see how that looks on the on the dashboard. And I think it, it really does a good job of sort of showing uh, the historic data compared to the modern earthquake data. And in fact, the, the lower Richter scales with uh, a number of uh, earthquakes collected within um, the modern time scale, which is great to see. Next, I'm going to add a pie chart. If I go pie chart, and then we've got an earthquake survey layer. So this was a survey conducted to sort of understand the sensations and the feelings that people were experiencing um, when the earthquakes were occurring. This is uh, fake data for the purposes of a demonstration. So let's have a look at this data. In this case, the earthquake sensation that people were experiencing. And done. So what we can see here is that people were saying that earthquakes were loud, rumbling, or intense. Uh, this responder said it was quick and, again, rumbling. Uh, this person, in fact, said it was scary. Um, what you can see here is that there's common themes across these fields, um, but they were all co all collected in, in one open text field. Um, so what we want to do is use some of the a data expression to split this information up. 
So again, I'm going to go to configure. And instead of choosing that specific earthquake survey layer, I'm going to use a data expression as before. I'm going to use a split expression and then choose to edit it. And this was an expression that I wrote earlier, and there are plenty of examples available. Um, and this is just a hybrid version of that. Firstly, I'm going to bring in the feature set, which is the survey layer. I'm then going to create a dictionary to store these descriptions or sensations reported um, across separate rows, this row being called split choices. I'm then going to split up the information from my previous feature set um, based on the comma separated value, because if you remember, that was how the, the data was split up in the survey. Yours might be different. It might be spaces um, or something similar. And then finally, I'm going to trim this data as it's placed into the dictionary. We can then convert this dictionary into a feature set and return that feature set grouped by uh, the different descriptions and sensations that people are experiencing. If I run this as a test, we can see how that might look in a table and confirm that it might show the data that we want to see. Finally done. And then I can start to create my dashboard again, my pie chart within the dashboard. I can go sum of the count, great already starts to show the data uh, and the breakdown between the percentages of, of different recordings, which is exactly what I wanted. Um, I could go through and change individual colors, um, but I'm going to take advantage of one of the many um, predefined color schemes that will match my, the theme of my dashboard. I really like the look of this one. And something that I like to do is I always like to add um, an outline that fits the back of the dashboard, which I really like the, the effect that that brings. And then finally, I prefer donut charts over pie charts. So we're going to use a donut chart on this occasion. <laughs> and then we're going to press done and place this into the dashboard. And I'm going to stack it behind the map. So it's just here. I mentioned earlier that one of my favorite features was the ability to sort of re, uh, realign your dashboard, but do it based on these sliders. Um, so instead of taking up 60, 50% of the of the screen, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to as close as I can to 60% of the screen. So now the chart's taking up more, and I think it suits the pie chart when people toggle between the two. So I'm gonna press save here. Finally, just to sort of confirm um, that this chart looks as I expect. If I configure this Richter scale um, filter to look at that chart based upon the local magnitude, um, we can see how that might look for a user. So someone who wants to compare between the three and five magnitude earthquakes, and it's great. It does exactly what I'd like to see. So I'm gonna press save, and I'm gonna jump back to the slides now. So now that we've seen ArcGIS dashboards, um, you may have seen other dashboard elements within the ArcGIS ecosystem. Firstly, we have ArcGIS Web App Builder. Web App Builder allows the users to build configurable web applications. And within the builder, there's actually a dashboard theme. This allows users to build applications with the same card or building box style as seen within ArcGIS dashboards. By using the dashboard template, users can also take advantage of the many ready to use widgets available here. These could include editing, geoprocessing, or printing functionality. I recommend exploring the available widgets to determine whether the dashboard theme within Web App Builder will be more suitable for your application. The second alternative is ArcGIS Insights. Although Insights may appear similar in look to a dashboard, ArcGIS Insights provides analytical capabilities that allow for users to uncover patterns, trends, and correlations in spatial and statistical relationships. As opposed to ArcGIS dashboards, which is focused towards the presentation of data, Insights aims to help you find answers within your data set by providing the tools for this within the application. Finally, we have ArcGIS Experience Builder. This is a new web application builder within the ArcGIS system. Compared with Web App Builder mentioned previously, this allows for users to have more control on the layout and presentation of their web application. A user could build a dashboard style application with an experience builder where they may wish to add more extensive functionality. An example could be to place a survey one, two, three form within the application, thereby collecting results and immediately presenting these to users. In summary, over the past 15 minutes, I've discussed the use cases and latest functionality of ArcGIS dashboards. For those new to dashboards, they are used to present and visualize data, sometimes even without a map-centric focus. From an update perspective, we've seen how examples of how the recent changes and the addition of data expressions allow users to tailor the presentation of their data. 
And finally, to compare ArcGIS dashboards within the wider ecosystem of applications, we touched on where else users can go for dashboard style functionality. We have Web App Builder, Insights, and Experience Builder. The examples I've worked through today uh, can be trialed yourself, and there'll be some resources coming out after this presentation. So really, it's now just time to say I'm looking forward to hearing of dashboards created within the GIS community uh, here in the UK. Thanks for listening.